Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The word of God that I've chosen to share with you this morning is taken from the first scripture reading that Pastor Lee just read for us. I share with you today at verse 14. The disciples were devoting themselves to prayer. This is the word of God before us this morning. Please be seated. Have you ever heard a story that was so exciting that you couldn't wait to hear the end of the story? Well, there was a man named Harry who was listening to a radio broadcast of a pastor. Now, this pastor was also the pilot of a small engine airplane. Well, the pilot, he had some meetings over in Detroit, Michigan, and he was now flying back in his plane to his home in Escanaba, Michigan. Well, as he was flying over Lake Michigan, his plane ran into engine trouble. The engine was stopping and starting and stopping and starting, and the plane was going down. Well, just at that moment, the radio broadcast was cut off, and Harry never got to hear the end of the story. We hate when that happens, don't we? We hate when we come to the end of an exciting story and we don't hear the ending. These moments, when you get to the exciting part of a story, they're called cliffhangers, aren't they? Now, authors like Charles Dickens years ago was famous for giving these cliffhangers in his stories. Well, here in the Word of God before us today, we have three of these cliffhangers. Three of these moments when people are anxious to know what was going to happen next. The first cliffhanger comes in the words, the disciples gathered around Jesus and they asked him, Lord, when are you going to restore this world to the kingdom of Israel? Now, Jesus spoke these words after he had risen from the dead. And after he had appeared to his disciples to show him he was alive. Now, Jesus then spent the next 40 days talking to people about heaven. And during these 40 days, Jesus told his disciples that he was going to give them power from the Holy Spirit to be able to tell other people all about him. It was at this time that the disciples asked Jesus, Lord, when are you going to restore this world to the kingdom of Israel? This is the first cliffhanger. You see, the kingdom of Israel had been conquered by enemies about 700 years before. And the disciples here, they believed that Jesus was going to come to this earth and he was going to put them back in control of the world again. So they wanted to know when Jesus was going to do this. Well, then we come to the second cliffhanger. Jesus said to his disciples, it is not for you to know the times or the dates that the Father has set to do all this, but you're going to receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the world. Well, at that moment, Jesus started rising up into the sky. And clouds hid him from the disciples. As the disciples are looking up into the sky, two angels appear. And they say to them, why are you looking up into the sky? This same Jesus, who's been taken up from you into heaven, will come back in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. This is the second cliffhanger. When is Jesus going to do all this? When is Jesus going to give them power to be able to tell others about him? When is Jesus going to come back to this earth? Well, then we come to the third cliffhanger. The disciples are all gathered here together in one place. They're joining together in constant prayer to God along with some women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the brothers of Jesus. Well, this is the third cliffhanger. 
what are the disciples going to do here without Jesus? They're all praying about this. And how? How are they going to be able to tell everyone around them about Jesus? Can you picture all of this happening? Can you feel the excitement and the tension and the anxiety in the disciples here? So what did the disciples do next? Well, the Bible tells us they joined together in passion and in prayer. That's the first thing the disciples did to prepare for the coming of the Holy Spirit. The disciples and some women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and his brothers, they were passionate about praying for God's guidance here. All of them were open to what God might be able to do next. All of them, they were, had this leap of faith. They trusted that God was going to use them in some powerful way. Stephen Covey and Rebecca Merrill, in their book, First Things First, ask this question. What is the one activity that you know that if you did it extremely well, it would make a significant impact in your life? Think about that for a moment. What is the one activity that you know that if you did it extremely well, it would make a significant impact in your life? I believe that if you prayed passionately to God about this, that God would give you the ability to do that. I believe God could totally change your life. Because that's what God did with the disciples here, didn't he? They passionately prayed to God here for help, and God gave them all the power they needed to tell everyone about Jesus. They told everyone that Jesus died on a cross, which they knew, but then they told them Jesus rose from the dead which no one had ever done. They told the disciples, that they told people that Jesus now had forgiven all their sins. That Jesus had overcome the fear of dying. That Jesus was going to give to them through their trust in him, eternal life with him in heaven. Then the second thing the disciples did here is they exchanged their priorities in life for God's purposes. They set aside the priorities that they had in their current lives to wait for what the Holy Spirit was going to give them. They knew here that what they, when they, once they received the power of the Holy Spirit, that they were going to be great witnesses for Jesus throughout this world. Dr. William Williman, the former chaplain at Duke University, in his book, What's Right with the Church, talks about receiving a phone call from a father, asking him to go and talk to his daughter, Anne, who was a student of his in one of his classes. The father was upset because his daughter, Anne, had dropped out of pharmacy school. And the father wanted Dr. Williman to go to his daughter, and to convince her to go back to pharmacy school. Dr. Williman went to talk to Anne, and when he talked to Anne, Anne told him that she dropped out of pharmacy school after she heard him preach a sermon about the purposes of God. The sermon, she said, got her really to think. She said she went to pharmacy school just to make a lot of money. But she said what really got her excited in life was when she helped out at the church's literacy program for migrant worker children. She said working with those children got her so excited as she talked to them about Jesus and as she helped them to get assimilated into their new lives. Wow. Sometimes, when we read stories like we're reading today in the book of Acts, we think these stories are not real. 
because we think that people would never give up their priorities in life for the purposes of God. But these kinds of stories are true. Because people like Anne here, they still do exchange their priorities in life for God's purposes. We learn a lot from this story today, don't we? We can learn to be more passionate in our prayers to God. We can pray for more people to get to know Jesus and for more people to be in heaven someday. And we can pray for God to use us to make this happen. We can pray that God will help us to exchange some of the priorities we now have in our lives for the purposes of God. We can pray God's going to use us to lead more people to know Jesus so that more people one day will be in heaven. Like the disciples of Jesus here, we can pray for the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to do this. God bless us all with this power in our lives. Amen. Please now rise as we join together in the next song of praise.